We're in Po in southwest France for the third Formula 3 race weekend of the season. Our special guest, Esteban Ocon, the reigning champion and the winner here a year ago. And there's a new experience for him, driving a Formula E car with ex-F1 driver Jerome Ambrosio as his guide. It's a great track. It's a fantastic track, so it's great to be back here. And then, you know, obviously being here with the Formula E, it's... Um, Lots of race fans and everyone's really enthusiastic about seeing what Formula E looks like real life. After competing a week ago on the streets of Monaco, this is the first time to see these cars in France before the next race of the FIA Formula E Championship the following weekend in Berlin. And Esteban Ocon looks impressed. It felt great. I mean, uh, yeah, very happy about, uh, about coming here, uh, test this car, uh, very new technology. So yeah, it was, uh, it was just fantastic to, to get this experience. Despite their very different technologies, both Formula E and Formula 3 share the same principles of aerodynamics. Hello, my name is uh, Remco Advocaat. I'm from Team Van Amersfoort Racing. And I will show you some things about the aerodynamics of the car. This is the nose of our car. Underneath the nose of the car, we find the front wing. The front wing is actually the first contact point of the airflow with the car. And what actually the front wing does, it pushes the air which comes from the front of the car up. And by pushing the air up, it forces the car down. By forcing the car down, we also create more grip for the car. We can adjust the level of the wing, which creates downforce, by adjusting the angle of the flap. We do that with the screw here and the screws here. By adjusting them, we can put them more up, which guides the flow more upward and creates more downforce. From this point onward, the flow continues towards the splitter, where the air is splitted into air going underneath the car and air going to the sides of the car. What you see here is the diffuser. The diffuser is one of the most important aspects of the car in terms of aerodynamics. What it does, the accelerated and high-speed flow, which is underneath the car, is expanded here and due to this expansion, it creates a low pressure area. This low pressure area really pulls the car onto the track, which creates extra grip for us, due to which we can go through a corner faster. Then we move from the diffuser towards the rear wing. So the air is coming from the front of the car towards the wing, and the wing splits the air, which splits it into air going over the wing and air going underneath the wing and there's a high pressure area on top and a low pressure area underneath, which creates a force going down. Apart from generating downforce, we also have elements which uh, reduce the drag on the car. For example, we have this element. It looks like a wing, but it's not completely a wing. What it essentially does is, uh, there's air coming over, over the wheel of the car, which is a turbulent flow, and a turbulent flow usually creates drag. What we do with this element is we guide the wake coming from behind the wheel over the side pots nicely. Because as you can imagine, if we have a turbulent flow coming from over the wheel, it will create drag over the side pot here. With this element, we can get rid of this turbulent flow and reduce the drag of the car. This is the end of my lecture about aerodynamics. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, Van Amersfoort obviously found the right aerodynamic setup because Argent Miney's number 29 car starts from his best grid spot in sixth place. <laughs> Pole for race two again, Jake Dennis on the right of your picture. Charles Leclerc on the outside of the front row. From third on the grid, a good start from the orange car. Max Gunter grabs second place. Leclerc on the inside, not quickly away. Antonio Giovinazzi in fourth place, but it's Gunter who pressures Jake Dennis as they leave Virage de la Gare and somebody leaves a bit of wing behind. Up to Pon Oscar, yellow flags on the first lap at this corner, but behind there's trouble. Callum Eilot tangles with the Mucca Motorsport car. And game over for Nick Beer. Safety car out as he loses wings and wheels. Quick tidy up, restart on lap four. Early attack from Charles Leclerc, number seven on Max Gunter. Young German holds the line on the inside and holds second place. 
Gunter can't match the speed of leader Jake Dennis. And he seems to be holding up Charles Leclerc and Antonio Giovinazzi. But soon the safety car is out. Ecuador's Julio Moreno is in trouble. Stopped to the side of the track. They restart again on lap 17. Charles Leclerc once more trying to catch Max Gunter unawares. But Gunter fights back. Good battle between the two of them, leaving each other just enough room to survive. 28 car has the slightly better line going into Pon Oscar. Drifts a little wide, but now he'll be on the inside for the hairpin at Lise. Giovinazzi looking for a way to get himself into this group. The yellow car can't make it through. Lap 18, Alessandro Lorandi crashes into Michele Beretta. He's stranded and the safety car called out again. After two more laps, a further restart. Leclerc again attacked Gunter. Giovinazzi behind, but once more Leclerc to the inside. Gunter drifts out wide over the curbs. Leclerc grabs second place, and Giovinazzi trying to find a way past the young German. Side by side into the braking area. Gunter keeps his nose in front for third. Giovinazzi pushing hard. And there's contact, pushes Gunter wide into the tires. The Italian goes through. And then a mass collision. All three Mucca cars involved. The red flag is out. Giovinazzi just has to bump his way through, and Gunter is shoved straight into the tyres. Giovinazzi and, and me had a short collision in, in uh, turn four, and yeah, then it was was over for me. Or yeah. I, I finished P18. Well, with a red flag, everybody's back on the grid, ready to restart the race. With less than six minutes to go, it's Jake Dennis who leads Charles Leclerc and Antonio Giovinazzi across the line. Fourth place with the Yellow Wings, India's Arjun Maini behind Alexander Albon attacking Felix Rosenquist for fifth position. No problems for Jake Dennis. He claims his second lights to flag win of the weekend. But a few more safety cars. Leclerc and Giovinazzi can play in the podium, but it's a personal best for Miney. Fourth place for the Indian driver ahead of Rosenquist and George Russell. I love the track. Um, like I said, uh, before I came here, it was my favorite track. And I knew I'd perform well here. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm just one of the bravest, I guess, uh, to push the limits up against the barriers. But uh, it seems to work. And, uh, yeah, uh, I can sleep well tonight. Second podium of the weekend. Jake Dennis on the top step I think once we more. we had a really good pace in the beginning of the race, but the problem is that we, the tyres went down really quickly because I was behind, uh, behind a car. So, yeah, it's like this. Uh, we'll see tomorrow, uh, try to, to take the best out of it. And, uh, and yeah, but it's still good points. <laughs> Another podium for Antonio Giovinazzi. It's a street track, so really tight, and uh, every overtake you can do is need be in the limit. So I was in the limit, I don't touch him, so I think he's not under investigation. I'm happy with this. Well, disappointment though for Max Gunter, who missed out on his first podium of the season, but one more chance on Sunday. Stay with us with Santino Ferrucci on the streets of Poe and lots more racing action.